Good evening, folks. Welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 412, and tonight we're going to be talking about knife and what makes us choose a knife system. And we're going to be going to the reasons of that. Um, also, we're going to cover what these uh, these gentlemen, their guests, Maestro Lalo, Guru Jay, and the different knife systems they experienced, why they chose them, and what they look for when they're choosing a system. So if you have questions, please put them on the right-hand side. If you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. Smash that like button. And we're just going to get started. Without further ado, here are our guests, Master Lalo and Guru Jay. Also, just on a note, if you're in those guys' geographic area and you're not trained with them, you're stupid. Just want to let that know. If you're in Mexico, in that area, and you're not trained with Master Lalo or seeking him, if you're in Hawaii, you're not trained with Guru Jay, you're doing yourself a disservice, in my opinion. Hey guys, how are you? Hey, hi, been? Master Dean. Hi, Master Jay. How are you? It's really nice so to be here. It's always fun. I obviously have profound respect for both of you. I enjoy you guys immensely. So I think this is going to be so much fun, you know, being out with like minded guys and uh, particularly ones that you like and you can chat with and I have a common interest and so forth. And we got folks jumping already. We got Paul, give me uh, Ernesto. And Eric O'Brien, that crazy guy in Florida. Um, yeah, Eric. So, um, you know, just before we get started, for folks who might not know, I know you've each been on before, but just a quick background of your martial arts training to present day. So, Master Lalo, you go first. Well, I began training martial arts when I was 15. Now I'm 49. And I began in uh, Taekwondo. Uh, but then, uh, I mean, maybe 25 years ago, I began training in Filipino martial arts at uh, Cacoy Cañete Doce Pares. And, well, I have been training, and, and I continue training uh, with, Cacoy, with Cacoy Cañete Doce Pares. But I have been, like, seeking other things, and I have the honor to train with Guru Royer at Bulos. I have the honor to train with uh, Master Dean Franco Piper. Who's that and, guy? I don't know, but they they told me that he was a good one. So I began training with with you, and it's amazing <laughs> training uh, Piper with you. Um, well, I think that that's the most important uh, background that I that I can tell about myself. Yeah, and you're selling yourself short. I mean, you are a true master in Dose Paris, what you've done in Mexico for Filipino martial arts, folks. If you have not know, Lalo made a top 100, and just because of what he's doing in South America and Central America, spreading FMA. So, yeah, so <laughs> he is, of course, <clears throat> selling himself a little short, but don't worry, we'll pick up the pieces. All right, Guru Jay, same question. Yeah, so I, I'm obviously the old man on the call here. This is uh, my 53rd year <laughs> doing martial arts. I started uh, in a uh, in traditional, uh, arts, you know, um, kendo and jodo and karate, you know, better part of my childhood. And then, um, like Master Lalo, maybe last 20, 25 years, uh, focused with uh, um, the FMA um, curriculum. Um, was blessed to um, study for uh, years and, and still study with uh, Guru Burton. Um, he actually helped, you know, lay down majority of the foundation you know, for me and uh, was blessed to train with uh, Michael Janich and with uh, Master Ridden Floro and you know, uh, a litany of folks, just just great guys. You know, given a credible list, I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, Guru Burton, yeah, I mean, was, I mean, gosh, right? Huh? I mean, <laughs> and, and uh, current current state, you know, um, obviously, you know, one of your students, you know, Master D. And, uh, well, you know, like I was, you saw the post and Blade. I, I'm, you know, I don't take it for granted. I'm humbled and honored that anybody wants me to make, uh, make me part of their journey. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't come, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, there's tons and tons of instructors out there. So, you know, when somebody chooses me, um, I take that to heart and I give them the best version of myself. And um, yeah, and I try to bring out the best of them. And you know, so it's it's a blessing, sir. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's a blessing having you know working with you guys. So, 
Um, okay. So um, before we get into it, I believe the focus tonight is going to be on, I said edge weapons, but particularly knife. Uh, why we choose knife systems? What are we looking for for our instructors? Or what the system is tailored to we're going to get into whether it's a prison system or all around fma system uh not not any one being better than the other but depending on like what you want what you're suited but before we get into that i believe knife is in our dna um i got you know tom soders told me that one time and it really resonated with me and i just i want to throw it at you guys um wow what do you think you think that you think the uh, knife is in our dna that knife quadri. Do you think a uh, knife is in our DNA? No. An art. Oh, oh sorry. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, do you think? Do you just think knife, like you know, just knife? Period. Do you think it is in our our infrastructure, our DNA? Just comes out naturally, you know. No. Well, oh my God, what a question. You know, <laughs> I, I, I began I began uh, training knife because it was part of the curriculum of. Of Filipino martial arts, mm. but I didn't didn't uh, see it like at the beginning like something apart or something uh, that, that you cannot that that cannot be together. But at the beginning, I thought that <clears throat> using the stick was the same that using a knife or using a blade, and it will just be like jumping from from one weapon to the other weapon. But right now, uh, after some years training knife. I think that it's well. Of course, it's extremely different, and I think that you must have it in have have the knife in, in your DNA, as you say, because it's not like just uh, all the guys that are doing Filipino martial arts are really able to to use a knife and do it in in, in, a, in a correct way. I think that uh, the knife is, I, I how to say it, it could be. I mean. You can be training years and years and years and years, whole life training knife, and at least in my case, I will not be able to 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 tell that I am really good uh, or an on, expert, I'm, right? I'm an, an expert. expert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. So I I think it's uh, different, uh, really different that uh, comparing with any other weapon, and and yeah, if you don't have it in in I mean, you, you can dedicate whole life and you will never be, be an expert on, on, on Or knife. be prone to not getting cut or hit with that thin edge or point, right? And look at the margin of error, almost zero, right? Yeah. I mean, look what you're going against and to be proficient in that area. You better be ready for failures, right? Uh, which we're going to get into. So, uh, uh, Guru J, same question to you. You think knife is in our DNA? I mean, maybe in the past, uh, Master Dean, I think that, uh, you know, I try to actually handle um, trainers or live blades on a daily basis. And, you know, maybe, you know, a decade ago when, um, I'm sorry, a century ago, rather, sir, you know, when um, the, the culture was more agriculture based, you know, there was, you know, sort of a, a need to actually use bladed weapons on a daily basis, right? So it was actually ingrained as part of the culture back in the day. Mm. You know, I think the the more we actually became um, sort of apart from that um, agriculture-based type of culture, um, yeah. there's you know less and less um, daily reliance on it. I mean, use it in the kitchen, use it uh, you know as a tool, but mm. you know, unless you're actually I think training and practicing to Master Lalo's point and, you know, making it a part of, um, you know, your DNA, using it um, on a regular basis and making sure that you, you have comfort with the tool. Because a lot of times when you pick up a knife, at least for me when I first started way back, um, there's a fear, you know, it, fear of getting stabbed. I don't know how many times I stabbed, you know, myself, you know, ended up getting uh, <laughs> Having to drive myself to the ER because you know, you know, as you're learning, you're um, you're just uh, sort of getting, getting comfortable with the blade. But unless you're, I think, experiencing it, you know, as part of your daily routine, I don't really think it is part of the DNA. I think there's a, a learned comfortableness with it. Yeah, I, you know, the far as the comfort, I can see what you mean by the comfort level. Hey, I'm going to carry this, and I'm going to go out there and. 
first person that says something to me, man, I'm I'm opening them up. You know, what I mean, I mean that's that's a level you have to get like pretty comfortable with. You know what I mean? You're, I mean, obviously not even taking into consideration uh, humanity or uh, let alone uh, legal. Um, but all, but just again, I, I say, you know, I think it is. But you know, and Danny just uh, Coach Danny, and I have to agree with what he's saying. You know, using a knife is intuitive. Defending against a knife is not. And I think there's some. I think there's an argument for that. Um, you know, um, and what is the deal, students? My said that what is ideal? Okay, we got a couple questions from Victor, which I'm going to get to. And thank you, Victor, for your questions. Um, a good point there, Coach Danny. Um, so, all right, what um, I guess what was the first first system where you guys took where you were exposed to um, not edge web, but knife in particular, like that kind of had some curriculum around it. Uh, maybe it wasn't the whole system, you know what I mean? Like Piper, for instance, or Reduce it, but you know, there was enough built, there was enough around it. So uh, Maestro Lala, what was, what was your first system? Well, um, of course the, the first, the first uh, martial art that I, that I trained uh, going with the, with the knife was Cacoido uh, Separes. But well, it's really different than the thing that I'm doing to, today, but I think that just like an exercise, the first time that I uh, I supposed that, that I used a knife uh, in a training session was training in Taekwondo, and because they have a, a, a form that it's it's supposed that you will stab the other guy, and they tell you that you can kick the hand of the other guy, and the, the, the guy will be disarmed, and then you can make another kick, and blah, 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 no? So at that time, I was like 15 years old, and I said, okay, yeah, I'm able to, to kick the ass of everybody. If somebody stabbed me, I can do it. I will kick his hand, and then I will kick his head, and yeah, I'm Superman, and I'm not, that's that's enough. I don't, I don't need it. I do not need something else. <laughs> well, at the end, you... You, you, you can see that it's yeah. just uh, something imaginary. Uh, well, talking about the first uh, start that I uh, had the, 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 the time to, to get close to, to the knife was with uh, Filipino martial arts, with Cacoy Cañete, with Cacoy Cañete de Pares. And well, uh, when Manon Cacoy came to Mexico to give seminars, he usually uh, uh, teach some things of, of knife, uh, Maybe not the whole seminar, but he began. To, he he taught us so many things. But there were just like, um, like you know, all the all that's like dancing stuff that you are doing. Okay, check here, go here, check the other hand, make that disarm, and you will able to do this and that. And well, I think that it was really nice, but it it was not the. The, the real the real you mean if somebody of, came up to you demonstrating a piper methodology you wouldn't be able to do that yeah yeah <laughs> of course <laughs> that's, the point. that's the point no but yeah that, that's the point i mean someday i i gave a seminar and at that seminar it was about knife and at the end of the seminar we make some some exercises but there yeah. were kids like maybe there were 12 years old something like that and the thing is that those kids that were 12 years old and they hasn't uh, used a knife in his whole whole life to, to stab a guy, they have to stop the to stab the other guys. And you have to stop them. Nobody was able to stop them. Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Because they just have to bam, 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 bam. Yeah, That's they still make contact, right? Yeah. At the end, some, uh, in some time, they, they uh, touch the other guy in the belly, in the hand, in the chest, in the in the face and well and they have 12 years old and they haven't uh, ever used a, a knife or had like a you know a formal training setting if you will i mean think about that like think about how dangerous they were without like quote unquote formal training yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like 12 years old yeah. you know what yeah. i mean we're not talking about maestros here they've been you know doing for two decades or something 12 year olds you know, I mean, yeah, you know I mean, who's teaching offensive knife to twelve-year-olds? Not this guy. I mean, it's you know, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I mean, wow. S same question for you, Bo Jay. Like, I guess, what was your first system where they kind of you were exposed to knife? I guess similar to uh, Master Lalo, it was more through the traditional arts, more you know, the Japanese art side. Um, my grandfather was uh, 
um, Joe Doty. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we grew a lot of blades and, uh, you know, training um, tools within the house. And uh, he was, you know, the first guy that um, actually learned from. Um, I think, too, what Master Lalo was speaking to, though, is, you know, a lot of the, um, the forms that you, know, you learn, you learn why when I was um, you know, studying the traditional arts, it really didn't give you sort of experience of somebody coming after you, you know, that's uh, resisting against you and coming, you know, um, you know, at a, uh, at a really good clip. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't really get that kind of experience until I had a chance to uh, be exposed to the Filipino martial arts. Um, the thing I liked about Guru Burton's approach was um, his uh, focus on progressive resistance. So, you know, he just didn't throw you out into the deep end mm -hmm. and, um, you know, expect you to swim. But, uh, you know, if, if you're going to actually be able to defend uh, yourself, you need somebody fighting against you with a good amount of resistance, right? Yeah, you got to feel the intention, you know what I mean? And um, it's one of the most difficult things to do, uh, not to digress here into being against knife, but being against knife is... Uh, Extremely challenging, um, extremely, extremely challenging. Um, so what, um, yes, absolutely, Ernesto. Uh, ooh, Renee's, uh, Renee Kovalev's here. Um, you know, I'm just catching up on the comments, guys, I'll be, um, okay. And I see, I got your questions, uh, Victor, thank you. Um, all right, so, um, after your exposure, your initial exposure, you know, what made you want to go to subsequent systems and kind of dial into Jess Knife, so Master Lalo? Like, what what were the reasons? Well, uh, I think that like everybody that is training martial arts, as much as you know more, you know that you know less. So mm -hmm. uh, I, like that. I, 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 I used to, to, to do all those drills with my students and all, all the drills that, that, that uh, Manon Kako uh, taught us when, when he came to Mexico, so, so all, in all the seminars. But at the end, uh, you can you, you see that it's not uh, the, real, the, the real thing, that you are just dancing with the other guy. And like uh, Guru Jay said, if the other guy is just uh, is, isn't uh, giving you resistance and is just doing just just in a in an easy way, it's easy to disarm, it's easy to to cut, it's easy mm. to go away, blah blah blah. But uh, I, I began to to realize that it was not the, the the real situation, that it was not the truth, and I began to seek another things. So I well had a chance to train with uh, Guru Roger Bulos and began training uh, Lameco. And my point of view is that Lameco is more realistic. Lameco is more direct. Uh, you want a better FMA knife systems? Yeah, Lameco, in my point of view, is one of the of the best. But well, uh, so I, I have to to continue uh, seeking something else. And um, well, then. I uh, came with you training Piper and uh, right now training a little bit of Medusa. And I think that it's uh, really different because you are you are really training in a realistic way. So that, that's the, 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 the point. I, I know that all those drills are good and they have, uh, mm, you are doing it then because uh, you, you can you can have more sense, more, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, well, you, you will get so many uh, abilities to, 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 to use them, to, to do some things, but at the end, it's not the, the real thing with, with the knife. Like uh, somebody put him, like uh, uh, Luis put him, uh, uh, when somebody will attack you, he's a, a predator. It's mm -hmm. not a, a, a drill, so he will kill you. And I think that you will not be able... I will not be able to defend myself using just just uh, the drills that I uh, uh, trained 20 years ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think we all kind of crossed that crossroads of reality or a light bulb went off, you know what I mean? Whether, you know, again, 
to piggyback off you, I, I think Lameco, when I look at David Gould's knife, I, I think Lameco is one of the best systems. I think a muck, obviously Tom Sodas. I mean, I think there are certain systems that just down to knife, and I think they do it well. Um, but you have to, which we're why we're doing this show, um, know where to look. You know what I mean? You know, know where to go, know where to look, you know, and we're touching that those reasons. Um and same question for you, little Jay. Like what, um, after your initial experience, you know, where did you segue into when you kind of wanted to dial more into knife? Um, I guess, you know, what was your rationale? Was there a light bulb moment or what was it? Yeah, I, I think, you know, Master Lala and I were talking about this uh, offline earlier. And, uh, you know, for me, um, it was always sort of the my physicality that actually um, drew me to the knife, you know, um, as, as an art or the different kinds of systems that focused on knife. I'm only 5'5", five five, so guaranteed, mm. I'm always going to be the smallest guy in, you know, the practice sessions or um, just, you know, typically when you're just walking around. Um, so having an equalizer, you know, to help offset, you know, folks that have you know, greater reach, greater strength, greater you know, speed and such, um, was always appealing to me. Um, mm -hmm. And I think as, as I sort of got through the different kinds of systems and listening to what you guys were saying, um, there wasn't necessarily one, um, you know, system um, that sort of um, in, early, in the early exposure to, to my that really stood out. There were really good aspects of, you know, different parts of the system. Mm -hmm. you know, as an example, with uh, Michael Janich's system, and Mike, okay. Mike, Mike is a genius. And, you know, the, the thing that is beautiful with what he does is he's so good at analyzing the, um, the angles that, you know, you need to actually um, to take both from a footwork standpoint, from a um, you know, a vertical and horizontal body standpoint to actually enable the best um, outcome. You know, Burton's uh, focus on, you know, just making sure that you're fighting somebody um, with resistance. You know, that was the foundation mm -hmm. for pretty much everything. Um, Master um, Floro's, um, you know, non-telegraphic. Non-telegraphic? Yeah, those, I mean, all of those different aspects, you know, I think um, they're, they're such... They're geniuses all in their own rights. Yeah. And, you know, just being able to to study uh, with them. And the reason why I'm, I'm enjoying sort of this phase of my life with you is because you're helping me to sort of aggregate all of that and assimilate all of these. And Medusa is really um, a perfect example of, you know, you know, taking um, at least what works for me and then being able to express that you know with all of the past learnings right so the whole concept of coming in and entering with the shock and then the latch and then the strikes and the stabs it there's a um there's a sensibility to that for me right yeah no 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 i mean i think you both raise a good point so i just want to catch up on comments they're flying in <laughs> i'm trying to keep track guys i do get your question nesto and victor i got your questions i'm definitely going to get to them we'll get to that part yeah, please don't think I'm not going to get to them. Uh, they're good questions, too, by the way. Um, there's a couple of questions here in Spanish, um, Maestro Lalo, um, that unfortunately... Let me give me the name and I will try. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And it's Huascar Coelho. Okay, let me, let me read it. Uh, and then I'm going to... Okay, let me just see here. Uh, uh, okay, this is a very important question. Rene Cocola wants to know, is it important to wear pants during knife training? This, I mean, right now, this is the question of all questions. So you guys take your time to answer this. I, I know it's good. <laughs> I would say that. Yeah, that's definitely a guess. God right? almighty. So, um, this is a question that we can kind of get in. This is from Joe. And his question is, is this issue with some traditional FMA knife instruction an issue with the underlying systems? or with drills, stopping short of progressing towards realistic training? This is an excellent question uh, from Joe. And this is, yeah. Um, here, I'm gonna post it here. 
you guys can see it. But again, I'll repeat the question. And so what Joe Swift's question is, is this issue with some traditional FMA knife instruction an issue with the underlying systems or is it more to do with drills stopping short of the progression towards realistic functionality with intention, adverse conditions, all that. So I think it's really, um, that's a great question. Uh, who wants to tackle it first? Go ahead, Jay. <laughs> thanks, thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, it. this is just, you know, ripping off straight from um, Guru Burton, right? But I think he has it spot on, right? Um, fighting proficiency is important. I think that um, the technical proficiency, the drilling is equally as important. And I think that sort of a focus, a um, unbalanced focus to one or the other um, is actually going to do a disservice to you. If you actually are in, um, you know, you throw two guys in and say spar, you know, and, and expect them that they expect that they're going to self-realize and be able to, um, you know, master, you know, the, the techniques um, over time. Maybe, mm -hmm. but I think that's a bit unrealistic. I think that um, the especially if you're smaller in stature, the technical aspects for me was was critical. And the, you know, the, the system that actually helped to sort of galvanize everything for me and make things more sensible from a knife standpoint was actually C-Lot, the empty hand aspects of C-Lot that actually helped to, um, to make, I, I, I hope, you know, myself a better uh, knife practitioner. And, and the reason is when you're small, you need to actually use the levers, the, mm. you know, the, and as you're in particular, as you're coming in with the entries, right? Because, you know, at 165, you know, um, on a good day, um, you know, if I'm actually entering in on somebody that's 240, you know, you're going to have to make sure that you're using the proper levers, um, the proper mechanics to actually get in. Um, and um, the technical aspects of that is critical. You know, so I, I think that drills absolutely um, not just have a place in everything that we should be doing, but I think it's, the, uh, you know, the one side of the coin to the, the fighting proficiency uh, that's on the other side of the coin. I don't know if that answered the question. No, no, I, I think you did, and I think it was well answered. And I like your uh, your you know analogy to uh, C lot, like you know, and I can appreciate that being under Burton, like you are in his C lot program. Man, your forward and side lever better be on point if you want to have any off balancing whatsoever, and they're off. Uh, you know, good luck, especially in the guy that you just referenced. That's you know two hundred forty or something like that. And um, yeah, that's not going to look. Uh, you know, how do we? Uh, do that how do we train the wow factor i'm going to answer this question now guys um <clears throat> this is from victor and victor i'm definitely going to get to the other ones uh how do you train the wow factor surprise factor oriented knife you know ambush i look at those as ambush surprise and all that victor i think you just got to do the best you can i mean you know <clears throat> here's my analogy because i get this question asked from me from uh, my students you know what would you do if somebody jumped out of a bush and you know, and held a 12 gauge, you know, but I know we're talking about knife here. And, you know, like, you know, what, I know words, what is our highest arc of military? It's Navy SEALs. When Navy SEALs get ambushed, they die. So the average layman getting ambushed by a knife attack, I, I, I just got to be honest, we have to do the best we can. You, we're going to be behind the curve as far as reactionary gap. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be tough. But un, I just think it's unrealistic to think that, you know, superpowers are going to kick in and we're overdue to the person, you know what I mean? Depending on where the first hit landed to, you know, uh, hope that helps. Uh, Lyle, do you want to take a crack? And Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Jay. Yeah, was, if I could add something to what you're saying, too. Sure. Um, I think that uh, three things, you know, you, you've got to get used to getting hit, right? If you're going to get hit for the first time in a real altercation, right, then that sort of that shock factor um, is going to give you that momentary um, point where you freeze. So, you know, getting, you know, reps in where you actually, um, you know, 
geared up, right? I, I, I have a job. I got to show up, you know, to work the next day, right? But making sure that you're, you have that resistance um, is critical so that, you know, if you're getting surprised for the first time, you're not panicking, you're not freezing. Second thing is, um, I think uh, there's a under or, or lack of focus, maybe at least for the, you know, the um, systems that I grew up with, with footwork. And it's, it's not sexy stuff, right, footwork, but it's, it's critical. And, and especially when you're somebody smaller, mm. being able to actually retreat, you know, on, on the male triangle, sort of a variation of a cross step, you know, using sort of a cross step to, to plant and then come back in um, is something I, I still do to this day a lot. And then the third thing that um, we practice a ton of is draws. So it could be, you know, with the um, with a fixed blade or with the folder, but getting the reps in um, on draws and not just going to the, the fun sparring kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I think no, it's going to be uh, critical too, sir. Yeah. Do you want, Lalo, do you want to take a crack at Joe's, uh, uh, Joe's uh, question? Jay answered it, but if you want to take a crack at it, you can, no. if not. I'm agree with Jay. I think that okay. all those all those drills are really important, okay. and I think that you we, we have to learn them and then uh, evolve them to, to to the next step. And maybe for me, the next step is the, the, the things that are more realistic, right? Like right now, uh, Piper or 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 Medusa, for example. M maybe uh, some years ago, at least here in Mexico. Yeah. Everybody said that the most realistic thing was Krav Maga. Oh, okay. And, and I began training a little bit of Krav Maga. Okay. And I said, no, no way. Uh, my knife is better than, than Krav Maga. Yeah, uh, material? Okay. And, and it's more realistic than, than, Krav, Maga, than Krav Maga. No, So, well, I think that uh, at least here in Mexico, that was part of the of the culture, you know, for example, being Krav Maga, then uh, being a Jiu-Jitsu guy or something that, so like, like those um, those martial arts were were the the, the the first one, for example. And well, I think that if you don't have those the, the drills that Filipino martial arts uh, gave to us, I think that you will have a really big gap uh, training uh, uh, using knife. Yeah, if you have no experience with them and all that, how I, I, you know again, you know, I, I tell my students and Jay can tell you this. I mean, how are you going to defend against something if you don't understand the offense? One of the ways of understanding of offense is you got you got some experience and exposure to some of the drills, whatever they may be, pulse, you know, whatever. I mean, prasadas, you know, goontings, you know, and all that stuff. They're just for an example, guys, folks, if you watch, I'm I'm definitely I'm trying to catch up with the comments and the questions. They're flying in. Uh, okay, Kurt, I see your question. Absolutely, thank you, um, Federico. Hey. I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, what are your thoughts on scenario-based training? Uh, we can get to that. Yeah, um, I definitely an advocate. It. My students have to go through it, um, including having loved ones there and everything. Uh, how necessary would it be to start a base traditional FMA knife to achieve optimal results in system as? Oh, we're gonna we'll get to that. Uh, I got you here. Let me write that out, man. <laughs> I'm getting like so freaking backed up. <laughs> I got like uh, four questions on hold. Um, here, just bear with me, guys. Uh, footwork is key. Bouncing gang eye because you know, yes, yes. Can I about footwork? Uh, some of the students like I'm really about the night fight. How do you help them? to put their feet on the floor and that's though. All right, let me just make sure I'm understanding this question. Some students uh, live, live in unreality about the knife fight, okay? How do you help them put reality into their feet or are their feet on the floor? Um, I think you have to just, uh, scenarios, I think you have to, you know, uh, no words. I'm going to close the proximity from a photo uh, to one step away and see how they do. Uh, you know, just reality based stuff like that. Um, I think then they see it. 
then back off from that and then in court, go back to your usual whatever your curriculum is but sometimes they really just need to see it and feel it you know what i mean like um unfortunately some folks are just like that um and i'm talking in context I, to what you're missing ernesto may i answer a little bit of of, uh, of the of the question of ernesto, ernesto? Sure, go ahead. you know when i when i when i train Krav Maga, once i arrived earlier to the to the class and there okay. were two two guys uh, that were they were young uh, and one of them has, I don't know, maybe two months training, and yeah. the other guy was the first class. So the, the one of the first class took a knife and said, so what happened if I, if I stab you? And you know, the guy, I don't know, for example, said, you stab me and I block him and I will bang uh, with, with, with my hand on your head. And the, the other guy said, okay, and what happened if I have a gun and I, uh, I, I'm going to shoot you? And he said, well, I can take you the, the the I can disarm you without any problem because I know how to disarm uh, uh, mm. a a So I think that well they have like you said to be on scenarios that are more realistic. Not only say that okay I have a knife here and what are you gonna do? You have to stab them. You have to touch them. You have mm. to feel a little bit of of, uh, of damage or or hurt. Uh, or something like it really easy that I think that we all have done to paint the knife and uh, cross the, the other guy and say, okay, you got me here, you got me here, you got me here. And that way you will uh, confirm that you are not Superman, that they got you and you have to, I don't know, to, to move, to make the drill, to have a really good uh, footwork. Like Guru Jay said, I'm also a small one, so uh, you have to, to to have a lot of footwork to, to do it in the, in the most, uh, in the, the better way. So, well, I think that you have to do scenarios. It's really, really important. When yeah, they want to see it. You know what I mean? I think they need to feel it. I think they need to see that yeah. intent. They need to feel that aggression. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm with, you know, I agree. Um, you know, for them, it doesn't mean you need to keep doing that to them, just for them to no. see how vulnerable they really are, right? And there, I mean, like much to piggyback off when we first started, when you reference those 12 year olds, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, look, you know, when they were freaking 12 year olds, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's right. Um, it's gonna catch up on some of these comments and we'll get right back into it. Um, Amok, Amok brother, John Kufus, scary guy himself. Um, Paula was here, hey. And uh, yes, who wants to spar when demos? Yes, and no, we all know those night demos. Anything, what's staggerly pleasing, right? Mm -hmm. um, right, FMA, you know, they could be so staggerly pleasing, right? <laughs> all right, okay, let's jump back into it. And then I gotta get these questions, man, before I get uh, overrun by them. All right, uh, okay. When you guys went into the subsequent systems for your initial experience, were they addressing what you wanted? Like, I mean, and I, I'm piggybacking off something you mentioned in a test run, Guru Jay, where you were saying like, could be something within the system, you know, mm -hmm. even going kind of even dialing in further. And so when you guys started seeking out, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't mean like yesterday. I mean, this could be like, for instance, in your case, Lalo, it could be being exposed to Roger Bullis's uh, Lameco. In your case, Guru Jay, maybe it was uh, Atienza's way back, and I can parallel off that. Uh, or maybe it was when you met, um, you know, Mike Janik, or, you know, whatever. But this question is for both of you. When you did go to and start to dial in, were you, um, your, were your, what you wanted, your goals and all that, were they being addressed initially? Well, um, for me, I think I was trying to do it in a more realistic way uh, to, to really feel that the thing that I'm doing will be, will help me. But I think that the most important thing was that I have to tell my students that what they are doing mm -hmm. will be good for them if they have to use it in a real situation. Okay. Not like just say, I mean, it's supposed that we are teaching, uh, training and teaching guys that they can defend the, uh, themselves. And if you are teaching them that and that you are telling them that if you do this, you will disarm the other guy. Mm. I, I mean, 
can give them a wrong information and they say okay i will use it in, in the street and they will be they will get caught they will got stuck so I, I began seeking to other to other things that i thought could be more realistic and well sooner or later i arrived to to lameco with guru roger and i thought that it was really more realistic that the drills and stuff that i was doing in in Kakoito se Paris, talking about okay. the, the 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 knife that's mm -hmm. that was the thing that i was seeking yeah he's i mean again we already talked about lameco knife to me it's one of the better ones out there. Um, Guru J, same question. Were you um, when you went to the different systems? You know, not, again, not present day. Were your concerns, your wants, needs, were they being addressed initially? I, I think uh, yes and no, sir. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, you know, as you're starting to learn more about what your capabilities are, what your personal capabilities are, um, you figure out what kind of works best for you. So I'll, I'll give you an example, um, guys. You know, five ranges, you know, um, Largo, um, Medio, Corto, Clinch, and Ground, right? Um, for me, um, because of, you know, my specific physicality, I find that, you know, staying out, you know, at Largo range, sort of picking off, you know, the hand with, you know, rectal kind of shots, that works well. Um, depending on what the scenario is, right? We're just sparring and playing around. Uh, but uh, medial is tough, you know, for me because I get, you know, if you get a good boxer, you get a good kickboxer. Um, that's not my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, so what worked best for me was um, getting into um, to clinch, and um, mm, close that was something that. Uh, Guru Burton just ingrained in me over and over and over in years, right? And, um, you know, it, if you're smaller, but you're, you have an overhook, as an example, on um, even like a guy that's 230, 240, and you got that weapon arm, right? It, it's, you're following his ability to, to actually, um, to harm you, you know, or mitigate at least, right? And at that point, you know, the whole Medusa, strategy yet. And I wonder why you love it so much, man. You're getting yeah, in there, you're I absolutely love the Medusa <laughs> approach because yeah. it's very um, ingrained. You know, so it makes in, sense now. Yeah. Right. It makes total sense for me too. So being able to actually get to that, that latch position um, is critical. And uh, the other um, area of focus that was um, really important for me, and um, I have one of my best friends here is uh, a guy named Clayton. Um, BJJ Black Belt, but 10 years, uh, all we did every Saturday was try to figure out how to get out of, you know, um, you know, chokes and how to actually stand. Mm. Uh, so the whole focus was really getting back into um, ranges that I was comfortable in. Gotcha. So okay. to, to answer your question, right, it was really searching out systems that could help me fine tune that. But I didn't really understand what actually worked for me until, you know, years of, of figuring out what didn't work. I think that's part of the journey, right? You have to go through yeah. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I went through it. You, like you, and then you finally find what you, you know, but I think you need to go through all those steps, you know, in that course of arms, time, money. I, I just think it's part of the journey, but I think this is good. I'm going to pick Kurt's question in now because it kind of fits. So Kurt's question is this. Um, <clears throat> kind of two parts here. What is the context of the engagement you are considering for your edge weapons training? That's the first question. Second is personal protection as a civilian against criminal violence, offensive use from military. So you guys are not military, so it's definitely gonna be civilian. So, and like you kind of tapped this or a Guru J, like a beauty or stature, you're gonna be using this equalizer and all that. Um, so uh, Lala, you wanna take a crack at it? Uh, okay, I, I don't know if I understand the question. Yeah, I, I agree. So his uh, question is, it's two parts. So basically, it's like, what is the reason that for the, like, what would be your reason for engaging you, an edge weapon on your part? Like, why would you use an edge weapon? The second part of the question is personal protection as a civilian against criminal violence, 
otherwise used for military usage. So you're not in the military. So yours would be coming from the perspective of a civilian against potential violence. Again. Yeah, of course, civilian. And I think, well, I, I used to carry a, a knife every day, but I stopped doing that. Uh, and I think that, well, the, the most important thing for me would be to protect my family, protect my wife, protect my, yeah, my yeah, daughter, yeah. my son. That's the, 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 the only thing that I would use. Yeah. The problem in Mexico is that the laws are really, really bad, really bad laws. So mm -hmm. maybe you, you use it in a self-defense uh, and I will stop in jail and the other guy will have any problem. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there have been so many, so many cases like that. So that's why I stopped using uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know if he hit a wrong button or something, but hopefully he will be joining us. Um, I, you want to finish up like what, what he was answering? Because you kind of come from the same premise. You're going to be using civilian, self-protection, you know. Um, yeah. Oh, he's back. Wait, wait, wait. Think, we got him back. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's a great question. That's yeah, great. it is. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. okay, no problem. Okay. It happens. Uh, so, well, may I continue or? Oh, yeah, please do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think that that's the most important thing that I will use or, or carry a, a knife for, for self-defense, but protect my family, not even protect myself. Right now, I carry a Kubotan and I think it's really a good weapon. It's easy to carry, it's easy to use it, and it's really, uh, well, I, I like it a lot. Uh, also important, here in Mexico, you cannot carry a gun. I know that there mm. are so many states in USA that you can carry a gun and, and you can go to, to, to your work and you can go in your car or you can okay. have a, a gun in, in your house. Here in Mexico, you are not able to to to, to carry a gun or have it in your in your house. So that's, uh, well, something that we have to, to, to consider. So, well, that's my point of view, just in self-defense. Yeah, no, no, that was a good question. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, you, want, you want to chime in, Jay, further or? Yeah, I, I think, like I was saying, I think this is a really good question. And mm. um, just like in Mexico, um, Hawaii is an ultra liberal yeah, state. Uh -huh. We just, uh, we just, because of the um, ruling that came out of New York, um, converted over um, from a shell, um, a May issue rather, state to a okay. shell issue state. Um, so from a uh, from a self-defense standpoint, the knife was really the, the de facto um, tool that uh, you know people had as an option here. Yeah. Um, I think that the United States, Hawaii in particular, is extremely litigious. Mm. So if, if you're, you need to actually be aware of that as you're incorporating that into your training, right? So okay. the, the the person that you know had the most sophisticated um, approach to this and embedded this into his whole training curriculum was, for me, was Mike Janich. And so Mike actually concentrated a ton on, you know, verbal de-escalation, situational awareness, just making sure that you're not with stupid people, with, you know, stupid places doing stupid, stupid things, right? Stupid. <laughs> that famous quote. So, I mean, that, that's, that's the key, right? Um, but um, to Master Lalo's point, right, if... Uh, if you end up having to um, to engage with someone, um, and especially if you know my children or my wife's with me, then um, you know I think you need to be cognizant of how you respond, right? So I think this this will spawn, I'm sure, a whole different set of um, of. Uh, discussions here you know one i know i know we're choosing a nice system where we're going and it's no fault of anybody i know it just this right is, yeah. you could actually um you know ensure that you're stopping as long as you can get the opponent or the threat rather to stop mm -hmm. um you know the aggression i think that's what you need to be cognizant of and do it within um you know do it with appropriate um you know uh Respond with a, an appropriate response in terms of the lethality, lethality that you're going to be introducing into the, the scenario here. So um, maybe that's kind of a 
chicken shit way of answering the question. No, 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 no. And I, again, we, we're yeah. digressing, and that's okay. Yeah. Some of the questions come in. Um, I'm going to try to get us back on track. <clears throat> Why would you use? But at any rate, um, I do want to get to, he's been waiting patiently, and Victor has had a few questions in, and his, um, your guys' opinion, and we'll just throw this in now. Um, student mindset, like what, what, do we, what should we look for if we're going to teach somebody? You know, obviously, if somebody calls me up and asks, you know, I, I want to learn knife fighting, I tend to uh, not return that message. <laughs> um, so, what should we look for in like student mindset for those that you would be willing to teach, regardless if it's FMA or whatever the knife system comes from? Well. I think that before mindset, I will uh, answer the question of Victor or something. I think it was Victor about the, the, the age. I usually do not accept uh, in my classes uh, kids that are, uh, well, I, I accept for 15 years and over, never never less than 15 years. As far as what you to teach them edge weapons? Yeah, yeah. even, uh, even uh, impact weapons. Uh, only guys uh, that are older than 15 years, and the only the only one that I that, that it's uh, that that is younger is my my daughter, and she's nine, and I began training her when she was six. You're getting and her she, Piper. No, no, just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and she's training Piper and and Doily and you know sticks and blah blah blah, but. Uh, I think that the most important thing for me is that because the, the guys are not really mature and, and they, they will they are able to do stupid things. So I, I prefer not to teach guys uh, that are younger than 15 years. And I about am. what I said, once again, I think that you have to, to tell them that the most important thing, when, if, if they are in front of a, of a knife, the most important thing is that they have to go away. Like Guru Jay say, no stupid uh, things, no stupid guys, no, no uh, stupid places. So go away, and that's the best the, the best defense. If you want to do, like, I don't know, karate kid stuff or something like that, you will die. So uh, for me, that's the, the, the first thing that I uh, told them, that I tell them that, that they, they cannot think that they will... Be, they, they would release the, the fight without any any cut or without any 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 things, and we use usually at the beginning uh, wood uh, wood knife uh, knife made of wood, and I try to 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 hit them. It's mm. not it's not like like big cutting, but they, 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 it hurts, and they say, "Oh my god, it, it, it hurts!" And if if it hurts. What will happen if they caught me? So it's like trying to put the, the mindset because I don't know if you have been that with guys that, for example, also using wood, uh, wooden, uh, wooden knife, they took it in the by the edge or they're just like uh, throwing it and playing with the with, with the with the with the knife. And I think that you have to respect the knife because even if it's wood, it, it will yeah. be it will damage you. So I think that for me, it's the, the first thing that I try to, 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 teach, to teach them about the mindset. Try to go away uh, and, and respect the weapon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one, yeah, I mean, no argument there. And uh, Guru Jay, anything you want to add? And uh, you got a question from Paulo that fits. And then I'm going to get to the other guy's questions when we tap into me. Some of them were kind of surrounding Piper and Medusa. Uh, I think so, Master yeah. Lalo said it really well. Okay. All right. So here's Paolo's question. So there seems to be an overwhelming preoccupation with knife work for self-defense. Do either of you guys enjoy the art for the sake of art itself? Yeah. Great question. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right? You guys, yeah. You guys like that, right? Yes, of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I can't stand it. I, I think that, uh, Just kidding. <laughs> Just... that that's a really really um important question that yeah i think he's teaching the other dark side imagine if you just trained medupa uh geez, medupa, medusa and piper and you didn't do anything art wise and you were just doing that like, i don't know if that's psychologically the most <laughs> yeah you know good question Paul. you want to go ahead jay 
And uh, mm -hmm. I was just going to say that uh, the, especially the older I'm getting, the, the more appreciation I have for the, the art aspect of it. You know, at different parts of your life, right? You have um, different uh, focuses, right? But I think mm -hmm. that uh, there's a, a real appreciation for just the beauty of the, the techniques and such now. Maybe that I didn't have like even five, ten years ago. Yeah, it's fun, like just playing around with it, right? I mean, who has not just played around with it, being Zorro or whatever? Right? <laughs> how many knives do you have? You know, how many? How many, knife, how many knives do you have? It's not only the beauty of the art, you know, the beauty of, of, of the yeah, there's an absolute fascination. 100%. Yeah, yes. We are fascinated by the knife. I mean, it's in yes, our DNA. Course. I and, have uh, more than 200 knives. And, and, yeah. and yeah, of course. And my <laughs> wife always told me another knife, another knife, oh. another knife. And, and well, you have a really, really like, good wife. Not only the, the, art, the, the, the weapon like that, it's just amazing. Yeah. And for all the other guys, they would say it's the same. It cut. You can cut yeah. the meat. You can cut whatever. But well, I think that knife is just fascinating. It is. I, I totally agree. It's it's why I went. I mean, I when I first saw it, I took the stick and threw it over in the corner. Took JKD, threw it in the corner, and I'm not saying those were the smartest decisions, but it's what I did. I just was so immersed. I was so fascinated by it for a multitude of reasons. But yeah. Um, okay. Important question here. Isn't the focus of tonight's show the knife? Okay, you guys. You can answer it now. If you need to think about this, think about the question, okay? And then you can take some, take a few minutes to answer if you want, okay? The focus of tonight's show is what? Lala, master. You need a few more minutes? Well, Guru Jay, the focus of tonight's show is? I'm going to give you guys a hint. Starts with a K, ends in an E. It's, it's nice. There's an N. There's an I and there's an F. <laughs> Just kidding. You. Yes, the, 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 the focus is definitely knife, but why do they choose the systems they do to be more specific? Just just kidding. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, I just want to make sure. Man, these are coming in. I'm trying to catch up, guys. I'm sorry. All right, I just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions. Um, uh, okay, okay. How can you train the psychology aspect of knife combat? Um, and okay, uh, Paula was quite happy to hear your your guys' answers. It is so just seductive. That's a good way of putting it, Coach Shandy. Knife is seductive. Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, <laughs> That's kind of answers. Uh, yeah, just kidding, Gil. That's all. No worries. Um, train, uh, all right. All right. Let's get back a point because uh, before you know, we're going to be here to midnight. <laughs> um, all right. Or, uh, I'll be here to midnight. Um, okay. All right. So this is Elric. And I thought Elric uh, brought some, some good points up. And wasn't necessarily in the question format, but close enough. Okay, this is from Elric, Elric and uh, he always comes up with some pretty good stuff. All right, training goals that inform their considerations and needs for accessing a system. Then, is your assessment of methods trained in? So I guess what he's asking is, upon your initial consideration and, and what you and your needs were, did that help you assess the system before you chose it? So Guru Jay first. Mm. Um, yes, absolutely. Okay. Right. So I think if I understand the question correctly, um, you know, if, if we're talking about this from the context of self-defense, do the techniques work under pressure? Will the technique stop the threat? You know, what's interesting um, here in Hawaii for me was um, we, we have a huge homelessness problem, bigger mm. than, you know, San Francisco. Um, and California, and uh, a huge um, drug problem here. So there's a, a, a lot of um, folks on the streets that are not mentally stable. So, if, yeah, a, a sort of an addendum criteria for me was 
will the technique stop the threat without risk of bodily fluid transfer? So, um, you know, making sure that, you know, going to the ground is an example, mm. you know, not good, right? Yeah, ro rolling Pick around. Up, stand uh, yeah. up, right? Yeah. And minimizing the chance of getting bitten. Um, it, it was, it, it's getting really bad, bad guys, you know. Uh, well, I would have never, I would have never guessed your your state for that you know like san francisco is pretty much all over the media but i don't hear anything like about your about your uh, area there wow yeah it's because they don't want it to be adversely affecting uh, the tourism oh the tourism and all that money coming in right yes. so anyway i think that uh yeah there's there's that aspect and the reason i like paulo's answer or question rather is <clears throat> In addition to that, right? Does it does the art that you're studying does it bring you joy? And you know, are, are you enjoying uh, what you do, right? Appreciating the the art aspect of it. So, um, I think that uh, yeah, you, you definitely sort of overlay those considerations before you make a choice, right? Yeah, right. You look at their dressing when you initially came in, right? Your needs and what you wanted. Uh, same question for you, Master Lawa. <laughs> Well, um, I, I think I have the, the same point of view that that, that Guru that Guru Jay. I think that he answered in the in the correct way. Yeah, yeah, the same thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, right. You're gonna look at what you want. You're gonna see if they if they address it, and that's gonna make your decision, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So the more I, the more you're able to identify your needs, right, the easier I think it's gonna be able to assess the system and whether it's a good fit for you or not, right? Yeah. Um, you, right. you know, uh, one, one more thing, Master. Sure. I think that is kind of interesting too. Um, from a health and well-being standpoint, um, I think there's a, there's a benefit to um, FMA in particular, right? That whole, you know, I think Mark Denny and uh, and uh, you know Dogzilla put it, you know, best. You know, there's the, working that bilateralism, making mm -hmm. sure that you. Uh, are working your left and, and your right, um, your dominant, your support um, aspects. Um, that helps, you know, with coordination and, you know, just keeping the mind um, active too. So I think there's yeah. a health and well-being aspect to to this too. So. I think so, right? Uh, can you you could put it in the kitchen drawer, the junk drawer? Okay, can't all move, especially natural. The active movie be implemented with a knife. Survival is not true. Okay. And that to Kelly Warden. Always nice to see him popping. Oh, that too. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be coming on very soon. He's got that big camp coming up in um, September. It can all move and actually reactive movement be implemented with a knife? Yeah. Can't argue that, regardless of the, of the style based cultural instinct, common sense. Yeah. All right, all right. Okay. Uh yes. All right. So we got through uh we got through Elric's. Um and then I gotta get these questions, which a lot of them were kind of uh, towards Medusa and Piper and how the crossover and stuff like that. So uh before we get that, let me just see what we got here. Okay. Um When you guys, as you got, I, I guess more mature, what to look for, what you, what you knew fit you best, you know, um, you know, as far as your needs and what your considerations and what you, you know, what you want to tailor to you. Um, how much did your value system, moral compass, and legally defensible? How much did that come into play? You want to start it off? Uh, Maestro Lalo? In other words, like, did that, you know, as you got more into different systems and all that, did those three become part of the decision too? The three I just mentioned? Uh, the, the question is that adding the, 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 the different styles? No, 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 not adding, but in other words, like, when you're starting to look at systems now, do you take into account, okay, I want to know the teacher's moral compass. I want to know if he advocates that checking in your moral compass i want to know if he advocates you know your value system i want to know if he touches on legally defensible 
How important is that for you now when you're looking at a system now? Oh, really important. Really important because, again, like, uh, well, knife is fascinating. And mm. I think that it's not only the, the self-defense or cutting or having a knife, all, all the stuff that you have to know about law, for example. And there are different laws in, in, in each country. And you have to, to well, uh, you have to at least have an idea about all the stuff that, 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 that includes the, the knife. For example, uh, Luis from Colombia said that it's illegal to carry a knife in Colombia. Also, it's illegal here in Mexico. But, well, so many guys will, will have it. And uh, bad guys will, will have a, a knife. And... Uh, talking about self-defense here in Mexico, if, mm -hmm. if somebody has a knife and I attack him with a, with a gun, I will be the, the, the guilty. And okay. for example, if the other guy attacked me with a, with a stick and I have a knife, I will be the guilty. So I think there are so many things that you have to, to, to include in all the, in all the, in your training. Uh, for yeah. example, I used to, 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 I have, Two or three times we talk uh, with a lawyer and told him to to let us know about the, the laws in Mexico of carrying a knife. For example, it is like uh, um, meat that they sell that the that the, the knife it's you, you can carry a knife if it's no bigger than uh, four 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 fingers. No, mm. that in Mexico and that's not the truth. There's no law that say that. So, but but there are like like so so those uh, lies that that people think. Or for example, here in Mexico, there is a, also a, a myth, a, a lie that say that if you are a black belt in any system, the mm -hmm. law will consider you like a, a edge weapon. So if I hit you, uh, and I am a black belt in in any style, mm -hmm. I will go to jail easier because I'm a black belt and they consider me like, uh, like if I use a, a knife. So there, there are so many so things. So you would do basically like just a chop, chop the, whatever. And they're going to construe that as, as equivalent to the use of a knife. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's ooh. so you have to know all that stuff to, to protect yourself because it's okay. easy to say, I will cut you. Well, it's easy. It's easy that I that, that, that I can say that. Okay, yeah, I will defend my wife, and or yeah, I can. Yeah. Do that. It's easier, but I think that carrying a knife, being in front of another guy, and try to use it, it's not so easy at the end. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna get to Guru Jay, but those three things, I, I, you know, from an instructor, I look for those three things. I mean, are are they at least putting that into play? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, and Guru Jay, uh, what, what say you on this? Yeah, I, I think it's it's critically important enough to do. You know, mm -hmm. integrity, heart, intent, um, at, especially at this point in my life. You know. It's probably yeah. the most important. Thing. Yeah, think about it, right? At this point, you know, it's actually more relevant, right? Okay. Yeah, and that's, I mean, and this is the God's honest truth. That's why I enjoy spending time with you, because you have good spirit, good heart. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, I, I come out of the, the lessons with you feeling, you know, happier, better. So okay. I, I think for me that's a that's a really really critical part of everything. Even though I'm like constantly right. telling you the, you know, yeah. <laughs> just 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 kidding, audience. <laughs> that's not what I tell them to do. Um, okay. Uh, good questions coming. Okay, we're kind of going into this. So you guys are you kind of went through the FMA channels just like we all did, and all of a sudden. You start hearing about these prison knife systems. And the first one you kind of get exposed to, uh, whether it was curiosity, relevance, or whatever was the attraction. Let's start with Piper. And that's kind of why the reason I brought you both on, because you both had experience in Piper and Medusa. So what was it about Piper, Master Lalo, that you needed to check it out? Why? 
the realistic, the, the realistic mm -hmm. way that uh, the approach, the realistic approach that that you have uh, in, in in Piper, because you are not thinking about a disarm, you are not thinking about uh, to to control the other guy, you are thinking to use the knife, mm -hmm. and I think that you can, like I told you. My daughter is learning Piper without a knife. She's learning Piper with a palm stick, and and, and that's mm -hmm. enough for her, you know. And maybe right now that she's nine, she doesn't know that she knows how to use a knife. But maybe when she goes, uh, I don't know, 16, 17, she will. Uh, we will change the 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 the, the weapon, and yeah. she will be able to to use to use a knife. So what what I like about Piper is that it's really realistic. Okay. Um, same question for you, Guru Jay, and with um, in regards to Piper. Like, what was what was the attraction? Why did you want to investigate it? You know. <clears throat> I think you know, like we were saying earlier, it's a nice for me a natural evolution into um, what works for me. So the level changes, the misdirection, you know the. Um, Basically, um, the operating in that quarto um, range, okay. Is, okay. Uh, it just really resonated, you know, from a effectiveness standpoint. And I think just like what Master Lal was saying, mm. um, it's 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 highly effective. I think that uh, what's critical as part of this too is sort of a mental overlay in terms of you know the appropriateness of you know what what techniques you're going to drill because um, as you're put under pressure, mm -hmm. you're going to fall back to the things that you drill and you practice. And um, I think that uh, as long as you can approach it within that fashion, it's, it's an insanely um, effective system that uh, I think it works really well for me. So. Yeah, I, I, right. I mean, I, it speaks to everybody in a different, you know, uh, the, those who take it, I think it speaks to them differently um, for numerous reasons. Um, one, if you like to be on the inside, for me, it was, God, how would I defend against this? You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. what my attraction was. And some of the movement, I thought some of the movement was so just interesting. I've just never seen it before. Um, well, I'm sorry, the, the broken rhythm aspects of it that you're introducing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Who broken yeah. rhythm? Just, uh, you know, just... <laughs> and also, if you let me, I think that for Guru Jay and me, that we are small guys, it's mm -hmm. really useful. Yes. I think you know that you can beat a taller guy, a heavier guy, mm -hmm. uh, in, not well, not in an easy way, but for for me, that's really, really, really good, really comfortable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the questions I'm going to ask you guys now are from Ernesto, Victor, and Lazar. And these are all kind of around the Piper Medusa and all that. So, okay. So let's get to Ernesto's question. Thank you guys for waiting and being patient. Okay. Translation of the question of, okay. Similar I think to we we saw that question, Guru, uh, Master Dean. What's that? I, we, we, the, the, um, Ernesto is translating a question of Waskar, and I think we we answered that question earlier. This, not this one. Yeah, we did, but I'm going to tie Ernesto okay. and Waskar together because they're kind of asking the same thing. And what it is is based on the traditional FMA knife, can it coexist with systems like Piper or Medusa? First part of the question. Can a practitioner stay between them without modifying basic characteristics of one or the other? So I think this is a great question. Um, and, and again, this is kind of similar to what Laskar asked. So kind of put these two together. So you want me, I can repeat it if you want me, guys. So the first part is based on the traditional FMA knife, can it coexist with systems like Piper or Medusa? First part. Who wants to take a crack at it? I think they can co coexist, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Of course, I'm, you know, at the end, something that I like about Piper is that mm -hmm. it's open to to add uh, or, or to be added to, to what you what you have in your base. Uh, for example, in my case, Filipino martial art. So that's why I also a, a good thing of Piper. I like it 
and I think you can, they, they both can coexist without any problem. Mm. I think so too. Yeah, as long as it doesn't do a hostile takeover one another, so it doesn't look like it. But I can, I'm going to speak more in terms of Piper. Piper is definitely made to be blended um, and all that, as long as it still looks like Piper and it's, you know, and you're, it's not being a hostile takeover. But absolutely, um, you know, you guys can, you guys know by now I have an FMA flavor to my Piper, but it still looks like Piper's, is, you know what I mean? Um, Guru J, uh, same question to you. Yeah, I to totally agree with Pastor Lalo. I think that uh, it, it's it's very complimentary. So the first thing that came to mind is, um, you know, the the Dog Brother Diamond Step entries, right? Mm. You know, they um, are very effective, you know, if you're using that um, as an entry to get into the shop aspects of... Of Medusa, yeah. Yeah. So I think that, uh, you know, it really just comes down to um, what is going to personally work for you, I guess, right? Yeah, based then, on your stature, previous experience. And, right, and then yeah. the sealot aspects of that and using the proper levers, you know, mm -hmm. to come in on the entries. Okay. Um, and yeah. I think that uh, would work beautifully too, right? But at that point, you, you know, you have a nice blend of, um, in this case, um, you know, traditional, more traditional FMA and, and medieval. Yeah, well answered by both of you. Okay, here's the second part of the question. Can a practitioner stay between them without modifying basic characteristics of one of the other? Ah. Well, this is, a tricky, this is a tricky question. I think I, so. And that's, um, well, I don't want to answer for you guys. Um, I want to answer for you guys, but I can't. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take a first crack at this, Master Lalo. And, uh, and Go ahead. Take a, take a crack at it. Go ahead. Yeah, so I, I think that uh, for me, I, I think that there's an importance in um, making sure that you train and you teach that art, you know, in its in, as close to its purest sense as possible. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it takes an a lot of effort to make sure that you sort of compartmentalize mm -hmm. you know all of the different arts and you, you make sure that you keep to the the integrity and the um the intent of the art and then separate and apart from that if you choose to figure out a way to um incorporate you know aspects of each into whatever you're trying to express that's great but i think there's an importance in making sure that you preserve the, um, the integrity of what was being taught to you. Just uh, my thoughts, guys. No, I, I think you answered that wonderfully. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, well. I, I'm agree with Guru Jay. You have yeah, to- Yeah, right, he pretty much nailed it, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. But I think that at the end, for yourself, you will try to say, okay, this is really good. Did work? This thing works good for me of Piper, mm -hmm. this works good for me from Medusa, this works good for me from any martial arts, and yeah. you will make like your old combo, you know, and, and you will try to, and well, you, you will do it and, and develop it, but you have, we have to to, yeah. to, to try to, to, to keep the, the more close to the, to the natural system, to the, to the original system. Yeah. I mean, um, that's your point of view, Master Dean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's a few. I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, can you fuse stuff? Absolutely. Do you want to keep the integrity amongst them individually? And should you do them individually before you fuse? I mean, yeah, absolutely. You know, all the above. Uh, I thought you guys did a great job on that. Yeah. That was a good, uh, good question from Ernesto. Um, all right. I just want to catch up because I know I, Victor had a second question. I just want to make sure I can locate it. Um, um, what do you, okay, Victor, we covered this in another episode. Uh, what do you prefer for self defense, a knife or an impact weapon? Matter of fact, I think it was episode, if Renee's still here, <laughs> episode, I believe it was episode 404, Victor. And we, we covered that, I believe. Um, and if you have the time, Victor, please watch that episode. Um, it was a good one, and there and there were a lot a lot of information and, and rationale as to why some preferred one or the other. Okay, uh, just bear with me, guys. Um, 
just trying to find the, the okay here we go and this is um he's saying a street system but i'm going to kind of we can we can substitute piper and, and all that okay so here's victor's uh, question what is the difference between fma knife system and a street knife system so instead of saying street knife system i mean let's substitute piper um for instance um so who wants to go first well i think and i will try to 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 focus um, on on piper and medusa mm. that they are more natural okay that you you can react in a really natural way instead of thinking about a drill that you are doing i know that the drill sooner or later will be part of yourself mm. but i think that uh, the moves that you have in medusa and piper are natural and you can learn it easy in an easy way okay in a fast way yeah you hit on something um and i think fma could do this and i think some fma does this so i don't, I don't want to get chopped off the heel you know at the knees here but i will say this one of the things that knit when i started training piper one of the things that stuck out among many things, but one of the things that stuck out was the freedom to create yourself in Piper, your look. And I was like, wow, man, I, I can, as long as I take these Legos, man, I can, I can make them whatever I want. And as long as they look like a Lego structure, um, that really resonated with me. Like I wasn't confined to a drill and a pattern and all that. And I'm, again, I don't want I'm not saying all of me is like that. So please, you know, uh, you know, please try to understand what I'm saying here. But, uh, but I've never had an FMA coach come up to me team here's everything and I, I want you to you know i want you to have this look or you know whatever the look you can and, and all that you, you know what i mean and i'm not saying they they wouldn't say that or they couldn't say that i'm just saying piper made a point to say that you know what i mean um and so yeah that was interesting what you what you brought up there uh yeah um cool j same thing yeah i, I think I agree with you guys um, with one caveat. I think that, um, you know, I think from a, just a gross motor response standpoint, Master Lalo's spot on, right? Mm. The, um, the response um, using something like Medusa or Piper, I think it, it's sort of instinctive. The, the interesting thing though, um, there's so much a rich heritage and design development that is part of the FMA, um, you know, um, learnings. And the, the danger is if you have um, sort of a, if you take the JKD um, expression too far and you jettison some, some of the things that um, you think don't work, but it's just that you're not practiced enough, then you could be throwing away a ton of things that actually- Man, I'm not guilty it. of that. <laughs> yeah, me, me too, right? So it's really kind of a, an iterative thing that happens over decades, right? Yeah. You can revisit something um, that's, that you absolutely thought would just not work within FMA 10 years ago, mm -hmm. but, you know, might work for you now, right? Yeah, just right. I think I that, yeah, there's a few things, like, I've, the way I put it, yeah, isn't that funny that, yeah, full circle? But, <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think net net. I mean, it, there's a beauty and, and benefit in both, um, both, and I think both work. It's just you got to figure out what aspects of each, you know, the street arts or the, mm. the more traditional, if you want to call it, FMA approaches. What works best for you? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I mean, you guys are nailing the uh, question sign, man. You guys are like, yeah. <laughs> see, you two. I knew you two were gonna be a great duo. See that? I, I came on because I was a big fan of Master Lalo. I'm a big <laughs> fan of both of you guys. I think that's <laughs> why. All right. Okay, here we go. I like this question from uh, Coach Danny. Are there different systems really different, or is it the actual practicing in a realistic manner that makes it different? In the case of Piper, Coach Danny, I'm going to say it's different. However, though, I definitely see your point if we train it realistically. So... I, I appreciate the question. I do. Uh, I'm going to let these guys answer it, but uh, not so much from the, the Medusa. I think the, 
and I, and and that's not putting a downspin on Medusa. I, I think Medusa ha, is great for what it does, but as far as the different, I mean, just different approach, movement, and what they do, um, I think Piper is just different um, in there, and so it goes beyond the practicing realistic manner. But I want you guys to chime in I, if I'm completely off. Uh, whoever wants to go first. Go ahead, Guru Jay, if you want. No, please, Matt. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Well, well, you know, there are so many things in Piper that I haven't seen before. There you go. There are so many things. I and well, I'm not an expert, yeah. but like all the guys that are here in the chat, they I have been like you more than 20 years training. We all have been all those times, all, all those years mm -hmm. training. And there are things on Piper that I haven't seen before. So many things on Piper. So yeah. my point of view talking about Piper is that, yeah, the system is different and, uh, and it works for me, as I said, in a natural way. That's what I like it a lot. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, yeah, there's just things that are taught in there. I mean, like body alignment, the crate, the quickest direction now, the, uh, the broken rhythm, uh, distractions, the fakes, all, you know, no, here's the thing. All so many it's things. not that fma can't do this it's just i haven't seen it in fma some of the things i'm seeing on piper that now that does not mean piper's better than fma no no nope. um nope. it's better what it it, it it dresses some things better but fma dresses some things better than piper you know what i mean it's um so i hate getting that like you know what and i'm not saying anybody's doing that here you know which is better and all that but that came up uh when i started uh pushing piper or making people aware of it and all that i mean it wasn't really accepted in the beginning of FMA discussion. I mean, it wasn't the most, you know, favorite topic. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. All right. Uh, how many of you? Let me see. Okay, here we go. I've got another from uh, Coach Danny. How many who train Piper are completely newbies versus uh, train? A uh, little. Uh, no, actually. I don't know. Uh, the best of my recollection, Coach, I don't recall ever getting a newbie that's never trained edge weapons, period. Everybody that I've taught has had some, or probably the majority of FMA. Um, I'm trying to think here if there's anybody I've got that's just not trained edge weapons before. And I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. They've all came with experience. Um, to the best of my lodge. I, I'm, I can't think of anybody. Uh, Danny, highly trained before I started Piper. Uh, can you give me an example? Okay, well, um, here. I shouldn't be on here. You guys already guessed. I'm, a, I'm just, all right, so Danny would like an example uh, as far as like uh, what he was speaking on as far as FMA and all that. So, uh, uh, Maestro Lalo, what's one example? you would say as far as piper versus fma that that makes it different or that you don't see an fma i guess um, for example disarms uh, you know uh, i think that it's really difficult to make a disarm in real time it's really dangerous to do a disarm in real time and at the end maybe it's not the most important thing. I haven't seen a, a disarming Piper, uh, and most of the first drills that I uh, did in Filipino martial arts were about disarms. So uh, I think that Piper is just direct. You have to do this, and that's what you have to do to, to be done. That's it. Highly and, so in other words, Piper's highly tactic base. The offense yeah. is the defense. Uh, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, I mean, there's one way. Yeah, and I agree with your, some of the stuff you're saying. Like, sometimes you're taught right in the beginning in these disarms, whereas Piper, it's, um, yeah, no, uh, very true. Thank you, Master Lyle. Uh, Guru Jay, anything you want to add? Like, what, I mean, anything off the top of your head as far as giving an example to Coach Danny? Yeah, I, I think that uh, it's what Master Lyle was touching on, which uh, sort of resonates with me. It's sort of a, a different mindset. So the, I'm really mm -hmm. enjoying the Piper, the Medusa. I'm gonna gonna start uh, 52 blocks with uh, Master Ken, but they all kind of share sort of this different mental 
mindset approach to, um, you know, to, to defense, right? Um, and uh, it's new for me. Uh, both of you, thank you. I mean, I mean, you know, it's like you know, there's little sayings I like have really stuck with me from previous training. And even though I didn't do a lot of training with them, Mark Denny of the Dog Brothers, there's a couple things he that's really stuck with me. Um, and one of the things he says is, when you look at a system, what does it address? What does it address? Okay, what does Piper address? Ambush, predatory. You know what I mean? Like I'm like I'm hunting you. Whether it's a numbers gang situation, I'm coming for you. I need to come for you. Whatever, predatory, right? How come I gonna close that gap? I'm gonna overwhelm your senses so bad you don't know what's coming, when it's coming, and where it's coming, right? Right? Okay. What does it also address? If I'm on top of you, I know by certain body parts I can do this and get a wrap around your back. What I, you know what I mean? And again, I'm not saying FMA can't do this. I'm just saying. I've trained Atienza. I've trained Sayoc. I've trained Joseph Paris. I've trained Asano Blend, uh, Burton, um, Abenir, KI, Lameco, uh, Amok, and great, great systems people. But the things I just mentioned weren't addressed there. Now, does that make it bad? No. <laughs> because what does Piper not address? Sparring, dueling, standard grip, slashing. I mean, so yeah, you just you gotta look for it. Like, what is the strength? What is the weakness? What am I gonna pull from? You you know what I mean? It's um, so hopefully that uh, helped. Um, yeah, Piper's an attack system. The offense is a defensive. Um, absolutely, Coach Danny. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I hope that helped, Coach, because uh, you've been asking great questions all night, which which we appreciate. As always, when you jump in, Coach Danny. Uh, yeah, yeah, DJ, because you, you're attacking. Uh, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Uh, all right, we got, oh, the Cunha's here. All right, hello to everyone, especially my bro, La La Blomers. I know Dan explored different systems or, or just your own. It sounds like Piper is really good for knife techniques, but how does it stack up with thing like, I'm assuming you're saying Sayoc, um, Sayoc knife system? Uh, yeah, Sayoc. Uh, I spent time with Sayoc. I can tell you now, um, you know, Sayoc was based on templates of feeder mentality, uh, 3 of 9, 4 of 12, the transition drills, uh, tapping, good hand, bad hand. Uh oh. Hopefully, he'll come back. Um, and that, whereas Piper, you could say feeding mentality, but predator mentality, uh, reverse grip very thrusting no slashing so quite different other than the tool being used you know and i think that slash is something or my uh, well the other side uh, reverse grip in a step and, and a step instead of slashing it's really mm. important in uh, because many filipino martial arts uh, teach slashing and i think that at the end it's not as Good as it's stop. No, it's well, here's the, well, here's the thing. More, much more Horrible better. Than I have a down coat on, right? And you got a four inch legal dagger. It's like, there. It doesn't mean you're getting through all that and getting to the blue worm, right? So, but stabbing. Why the prison systems? Medusa. Yeah. <laughs> Why are they stabbing? You know what I mean? It's, um, um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. And, oh, Jay's back. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> you're back. All right. Uh, okay. We got. Let me just see if of course this uh, is the system on the mindset of the man. Is is it the system or the mindset of the man that matters? Oh, I think there's an argument for both. Um, a willingness to commit violence doesn't require training. That can't argue that. Yeah. So I think with yeah, depending on the mindset, yeah, will trump the system. I see. Not reading your last comment there, Kerr. I see where you're going. It's, yeah, again, it's not, you know, not saying one system is better than the other, you know, but, but you know, all right. Uh, I think we're caught up on the question, I think. Okay. I got through all the questions. <laughs> all right, here's a question for you, um, for you guys. 
when you're looking for an instructor, you're seeking out systems, all that, we know what you're seeking out. We, we kind of address what you're seeking out for our system. Like, okay, this is dealing with that. I, I want to go there. What are you looking for in regards to instructors? What are you looking for? So Master Lala, what are, you <laughs> are you looking for the infomercial 99.99? Dollars sign up, yeah. sign a contract. I, you know, uh, you know, I'll I'll take this one first. Um, All right. I think it's uh, it's kind of dependent on you know where you are in your life, right? And uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, you know I've gone through uh, you know the times. I remember I had a, a lump on my head, you know, from getting hit on a stick, broke my hand, broke my arm, broke my other hand. And my wife was like pissed off with me for like months, right? So, you know, don't want to do that anymore, right? Yeah, I and, really don't want to sign up for that. Anymore. Yeah, and uh, so it was fun. You know, at, at the time it was fun yeah. you know, to do that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But um, you know, at this point in life, you know, there's there's different priorities, right? But mm -hmm. the, it doesn't mean that the passion for the art changes, right? It, it's still it's just different, right? And uh, the, I think that's kind of what is appealing with the Piper and Medusa and, and now the 52 block, um, you know, opportunities. It's like uh, it, it still is challenging, but it's um, there's a, a more of a self-defense um, flavor and aspect to it as opposed to, you know, going out and beating each other with uh, rattan sticks, right? Fun, you know, at the time, but... Um, at this point, this, this, for me, this is what I enjoy, right? And I think that's really what you want, right, to do um, at the end of uh, all of this. You just want to just want to have fun with what you Yeah, doing. right. I mean, that's a common, that should be the most common denominator, right? As long as the instructor's not toxic and you're having fun, right? Yeah. Um, uh, well, same question for you, Maestro Lala. Before, before answering it I, I would like to add something about guru jay of course you enjoy it if you wake up at three o'clock in the morning yeah. to pray with guru jay with uh, master bernie with uh, master john border and all those guys of course you are enjoying it I, i'm pretty sure of that <laughs> and, it, and i think that's that's why we are here because well i'm also a guy that wake up at four o'clock to train so I, I really enjoy it, and, and that's the most important thing for me. And I think, like, like Guru Jay say, said, um, I have evolved according the, 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 the years and, and my age. And, well, for me, the most important thing right now is train for my own uh, role, for train for, for be a better person, train for, in my case, for give something to, 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 to my daughter that is the, the one that is training with me. Mm -hmm. my, my my son doesn't want to train a soccer <laughs> soccer player and well that's good. That's good. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. But for me that those are the most important things. I used I, I have I never had so many students. Maybe the the time that I had the the, the biggest uh, number maybe it was 20 students. Right now I, I have five or six students and that's enough. I don't need more guys that train with me uh, because I'm training for myself. Good for um, you. Yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, I was, matter of fact, I made a post in my group today, Jay. So I was like, yeah, I don't really, um, like, you know, I carry my own system. I'm not, it's not going to be prostituted. I want good people. Like, I, I, you know, I don't want reps. Oh, you know, I, I don't want that. I, I want good people. Like, my people are going to, put work in and yeah so i can appreciate where you're at as far as what you're saying as far as your journey um okay question from victor what about the experience of learn knife combat online is it a good way to learn and get a great technique um i the tough i think it depends on your experience victor like how many systems you've previously trained where's your background in can you identify what they're talking about, their methodology, um, you know, how they establish, you know, their their explanation around it and all that? So I think it's 
I think it depends on several factors, to be honest with you. Um, and there, but I'll let these guys answer. Maybe they can answer it better than I can. So, uh, Guru J, Victor's question. Yeah, I, I think that uh, you're going to have to have sort of a hybrid, right? There's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not something that you can just exclusively. Yeah, manage. it's really individual based, as Coach Danny just mentioned as well. Yeah. Right? But, your background, your experience, right? Okay. But but also having sort of hands-on ability to actually test the the techniques under pressure is really critical. Yeah, too. which is also yeah yeah yeah. I, I think it's say, you know it's good supplemental, but don't can't rely on it fully. But good supplemental, right? right? Exactly. Yeah. Sir. yeah. yeah. How about you, uh, Master Lalo? You want, same question. Well, I I think that COVID change all the way that we mm. train. Yeah. Uh, I, I was uh, a believer that you have to train with another guy hand to hand, face to face. Yeah. And I saw so many YouTube videos and I had so many videos and I always uh, saw them and said, but I will do this or I will change that or I will do whatever. But right now I am really think, uh, I really think that I'm able to train with you, for example, maybe yeah. in another time, maybe 10 years ago, I couldn't be able to meet you. I couldn't yeah. be able to, to go to USA and train with you one month, two months, three months. And right now, I, I I really think that I'm able to train with you, with Guru Roger, with guys from Philippines, with guys from yeah. England, from, guys from uh, Ireland. Uh, so for me, if you have a good background and you are focused on the stuff that you are doing, I think that you can you can do it in a in a in a good way. Yeah, I I, I could say like that. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. You got a good background, and you want and you got a good grasp of concepts, and you understand movement and principles. Uh, I absolutely. I mean, I think you can. Um, yeah, and be constant because if I trade with you and I will take the next class in four months, mm -hmm. I, I will not improve. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let me see here. I tell you what's really important. This is the most important. And Coach Danny's not wrong here. Uh, yeah. Yes. That, yeah. that is critical, man. Yeah. It's not a happy home life, man. It's, that's that's critical. That That is critical. And we got, um, oh, the maestro... Maynard here. All right. No way you to learn to uh, have fun. Yeah. All right, guys. Okay. Uh, wonderful question. Have we got a training part group? Yeah, I, absolutely. Sort of. Yeah. Okay. All right. Future goals for each and one of you within the lens of our topic tonight. Learning edge web systems and knowing what to look for and how to choose them. So what are your future goals with respect to that, Maestro Lalo? What do you want to achieve? My own grown, continue learning what I'm training right now. Mm. That it's, well, it's a lot of things. I think I, I'm, there are so many things that are training and I would like to, to keep on those things. It's Cacoido Separes, Lameco, Piper, yeah. Medusa, and Doyle Style. And that's a lot. That's a lot. I think that, that that, yeah, that, that's so many things and I should be more... Um, you know, go less to have less things, but well, I trying to 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 improve on those, and I enjoy them. So the the goal is like Guru Jay has said all all this time is enjoy enjoy and, and and enjoy what we are doing. That's that's my goal. Here's the goal for I think all of us as a community need to try to work towards. You know, uh, you know I, I think we I think we all should have a part in this okay and that's um the grow the art of pantless knife fighting <laughs> <laughs> from <laughs> from growling dog renee in canada and uh we're gonna get behind this cause okay <laughs> so guru jay same question to you uh your yeah, goals I future goals within the lens i guess edge weapons choosing future systems anything like that I uh, echo what uh, Master Lala was saying, right? It's, uh, you know, 
at this point in life, it's really about uh, being with people that are, you know, of good uh, intent, good spirit, um, and uh, enjoying yourself. Um, I'm enjoying ex exposure to the pipe of these uh, uh, 52 blocks. Um, and I think just like Master Lalo um, also, it's really important for me to be able to pass this along to my two sons, right? If, if yeah. Any, that's probably the most important thing. Mm -hmm. I think so, right? That you got somebody to share with and pass down to, right? Yeah. You know, whether it's giving them self-protection or tools to, you know what I mean, right? Or eventually have some way to train with, right? All the above. Um, Wow, this has been wow. We're going closer to our. This has been awesome. Uh, this has been. I, I I really enjoy this. This was like I knew it was gonna be fun with you guys. I, I just knew this was gonna be like a home run. You guys' personality and all that. But uh, any uh, closing thoughts for the community? Anything, Master Lalo? Any closing thoughts. I guess that was his close. Must have been something you said, Master Dean. <laughs> no, he's back. He's back. What happened? That was his thought. Here I am. Here I am. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we're just here. Yeah, I know. Okay. Well, it's not like Mercai dancing, but I think that if somebody here wanna get close to Piper and Medusa you have to go with Guru Dean Franco because it's amazing training with, with you, Guru, Guru Dean. And I really appreciate that. Humble that and you are. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, uh, so, uh, some weeks ago, you put the question, who are the best instructors or teachers, gurus, masters mm. that you have there? And well, you know what I put, you know what I, what I wrote that time. And well, that's because I really think think those, those, those I have those things. Thanks a lot. That's the only thing I want to humble and honored. You know, it's a blessing to work with guys like you, uh, Master Lalo. I'm telling you, you make it easy. <laughs> I mean, so you, when you got people like you with or work ethic, like somebody like you and Jay, it just makes it just easy and enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, I wish we could meet more, just because I think you have so much talent and potential which is why i told those guys medusa like this is the guy you want down there in mexico to um so i hope we can make that happen for you because i think you could we spread win. it down there i think folks would enjoy your take on it learning from you i a matter of fact i know they would you know what i mean so yeah i i just i know they would um but again uh much appreciation but i also appreciate having you because I learn from my students. I enjoy their coming, and I just enjoy that working together and building. Um, so my, many thanks. Um, Thank you. Goo J, final thoughts for you. Yeah. <laughs> You're same, up to something. <laughs> same thing. I, I really enjoy the brotherhood. You know, you. Yeah. Master, huh? Master Bernie, you know, Professor John. You know, a good guy, and, huh? Just, yeah. It's good to uh, just, you know, hang with people of good repute and, um, yeah. and, and good heart, right? So much appreciated. Uh, much, I really appreciate you guys. And uh, it's just, uh, it's it's been a really fun ride. Yeah. And it's, and it's not over, you know? You know, that ride is still going. <laughs> so Something else, I, I, I think that the last comment of Guru Danny Terrell, it's really good. I should we increase the gene pool with moral and ethical practitioners. I, I want oh I it. just yeah. I think that's really, 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 really important. No. Thank you, Guru Danny. Much, much agree on that. I can't argue that, right? Yeah. Um all right, just just came in even though we're closing out. But uh, what do you think about the draw point? Um Com tech system with James Keating. I don't know much about it. I can't give you an opinion on that. Uh, do you guys know anything about it? I, I, I'm not familiar, so I don't want to comment. I, I don't know. I, yeah. Sorry, right, I, I just I, not I, familiar. The only thing I can say is, you know, 
Master at Arms, James Keating, is a genius, right? I mean, he is, I mean, I've heard nothing but uh, wonderful things about yeah. him. We've been trying to get him on here for literally no exaggeration, two years. Um, but he lives. He's got like no internet where he lives or something like that. But I don't know much other than the Boeing Bowie knife. I don't know much about his stuff, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen some of his other, you know, some of his other um, curriculums, and they are fantastic. So I would imagine that this is equally. Yeah, as I've heard nothing but great things about him. Yeah, so um, it make would make sense. This particular module, whatever he's speaking on, is just as good, probably, right? So, uh, the main thing about James Keating system is that it is developed by James Keating. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> again, another comment that just you know is going to be probably the comment of all comments um, from Renee right here. The main thing to know about James Keating is that it's developed by James Keating, and I mean right there. So. <laughs> <laughs> And Danny Keating, yeah, I've heard, yeah, again, nothing but great, great stuff about him. Talked to him on the phone a few times, wonderful to talk to. I mean, absolutely wonderful. I wish we could get him on here, but unfortunately, the internet, man. All right, guys, hey, this has been absolute, absolute fun. I appreciate you guys coming on and uh, basically uh, kidnapping you for almost a couple hours. So, <laughs> Thanks a lot, Budo. Hey guys. All right, guys. You guys be good, man. I'll be in touch soon, or hopefully we'll be in touch soon. All right. All right. Take care, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. All right, All right guys. Later. You guys take care. All right. Okay. Bye. See you. Bye bye. Bye. All right. That wraps up 412. I knew this was going to be a good one, man. You got a couple good guys like that. What could go wrong, right? <laughs> uh it was coach danny thank you for your questions uh by the way they were excellent uh, do you ever train with the mexico huh i have to ask lalo that i know he's a big dose paris so i'm not sure well um renee are you going to uh are you going to have renee about the pantless knife system yes uh i think we're gonna have to cover that uh, i'm interested in seeing this system as well eric <laughs> My God, too much, too much. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up um, this episode. Who is next? Um, I believe Tom's doing something Tuesday night. Uh, and I know I have um, I have a PTK guy, actually, um, Wednesday. And I can tell you his name right now. Now, Jolie, at New York. Um, yeah, PTK, Wednesday night. And then Friday night, um, it's going to be really interesting. Guy who has a huge YouTube um, following. Uh, YT, it's kind of a uh, vampire. Um, you guys, uh, I know that's probably not going to do you guys much good. However, if you go on to FMA discussion, uh, where the episodes are pinned, if you look at June's list, upcoming interviews for June, you're going to see it, um, and you're going to see his, by his name, his YouTube channel attached. Check it out. Really interesting guy. Um, so, he's yeah, he's going to be on Friday night. Uh, but, again, Tom's got something Tuesday, I believe, with Lucci in England. And, again, I got Najoli um, on there. Let me just make sure I got that name correct. Uh, hold on here. Hold on. Yes, now Julie Brown, PTK. He's coming on uh, Wednesday night. So all you PTK fanatics, come on out. Um, he'll be on. I can't. I don't know much about him. I hear he's a great guy. Um, there, um, we'll find out. I can't tell you. I, I don't know if he's under uh, Tuan Bill, Tuan Jared. Don't know. Um, some of these I try not to find out, so it'll be more interesting when I get the person on there. Um, but anyway, that's Wednesday night. And uh, just carry up on knife thing. I sell training. <laughs> I sell training shorts. Where you draw from? I call it this thing. <laughs> oh my God. Eric, don't freaking don't get them going. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thank you for those who jumped in, watched, commented. 
That's many questions. Great questions. Great, great questions in this episode, actually. Some of the best questions that I can recall, actually. Yeah, thank you, guys. And I will see you guys uh, next time, which in my case will be Wednesday night. All right, folks. We'll see you then.